In addition to the lift already provided by the anti-gravity light maglev, Back to the Future's hoverboards will also benefit from the conventional principles of aerodynamics as a result of their airfoil shapes. Using a leaf blower, we can get a glimpse into how airflow during high-speed travel would affect the hoverboard prop, with the ultimate result of increasing lift. The extra lift gained by a real hoverboard would depend on its position and orientation during flight. When the front of the board is held at a slightly higher elevation, the speed of the airflow under its airfoil-like structure increases while airflow under it simultaneously decreases. This increases the pressure difference between top and bottom, hence increasing lift. This principle is understood in aviation as the angle of attack. When parallel to the ground in which the angle of attack is at or near zero, the board would certainly benefit from the more familiar airfoil principles during flight, but would also gain additional lift strength from what is called the ground effect. Ground effect is when air is compressed between an airfoil and the ground surface. This can result in significantly reduced wingtip vortices responsible for drag by up to 60%, greatly increasing flight efficiency. In a hoverboard, this extra lift will add to the lift of the main levitation force, whether maglev or repulsive anti-gravity. But as the angle of attack increases, there can be even greater increases in lift strength, as well as flotation height. But in passing a critical angle, more of the board's underside is exposed to a direct stream of air, which will reverse the previous gains increasing drag and reducing lift. However, this might not be entirely negative. As we see here, when Marty performs the side swipe aerial maneuver, the hoverboard is no longer oriented directly over the ground, but rather at a sharp angle. Thus, its vertically acting levitation force is no longer able to fully react with the ground surface, although it must still be able to push against the ground to some extent, else the board and rider would crash to the ground. And so what is the additional force that is pushing against the board in this position. An excessive angle of attack at a higher speed can result in stall, in which the air is literally pushing against a significant portion of the airfoil undersurface. Exposing the bottom surface of the hoverboard to a wind stream at great velocity, perhaps by flexing the legs as Marty does, might enable such a swiping maneuver in mid-air, as the board is momentarily pushing against the air to a large proportion and against the ground to a lesser proportion. Anyone who has been running or riding a bicycle while carrying a large piece of cardboard or styrofoam has probably experienced this force and sensation which arises when the board's or foam's larger surface is unexpectedly exposed to the headwind. A real hoverboard would likely have to be moving considerably faster than shown in a movie for this to work, however. The smaller the area of the airfoil, the greater the speed that would be needed for stall. So just as with any high-speed aircraft, the hoverboard will be subjected to a number of different principles and forces during flight. This in addition to the lift provided by its main anti-gravity maglev system. But due to the relatively small size of the hoverboard, it might actually benefit from the principles of stall, which would be extremely dangerous for larger aircraft. Instead, of some of these forces could be used to great effect in maneuverability by a skilled rider. Again, it seems that science fact is beginning to approximate science fiction.